Hello, my name is Michelle and welcome to my channel, Michelle's Melancholia. Today, let's talk about the books I read in September and as usual, I will go through them in order from the one I like the least to the one I like the most and I will give you my rating but remember that the rating is purely based on how much I enjoy the book and I will try to explain what worked for me and what didn't so you can make up your mind whether you want to read these books or not. The first book is Cirque du Freak, A Living Nightmare, which is book number one in the saga of Darren Shan. And um, I think this was a little bit of my own fault because I am not the target audience for this book. This is a book for children. And the reason I read this book, uh, well, actually, I listened to it uh, as an audiobook, uh, but that was because I was looking for something that I could listen to at work when I was doing uh, some tasks that didn't require that much brain power. So I wanted something to keep me entertained, but that it was like simple enough for me to be like switching on and off uh, in terms of attention. So I decided that a uh, children's book or middle grade or even young adult books would probably be the best way to go. And I didn't want to spend money <laughs> on children's books. So I went with whatever was available uh, from my local library and this was one of them. So as I said, uh, this was not written for me. So that's probably why I didn't enjoy it. But let me tell you what it is about. This is about a kid, I think he's like about 12 years old and his name's Darren, of course. And one day the Cirque du Freak comes to town. So it's basically a freak show. And him and his friends are like very excited to go. So they come up with this plan to sneak out and get tickets and go to the show, which is what he ends up doing. And when he goes to the show, there's this one act that blows his mind because it's like these a very big, very venomous spider that does tricks. And this boy loves spiders, so he gets obsessed with the idea of getting this spider. So basically he goes back into the theater to steal the spider. But what he doesn't know is that the director of the uh, Cirque is a vampire. And he didn't like that this boy basically stole his, his spider. So he comes after him. And that's the premise of the book. And actually, in terms of horror, for a kid's book, this was really good. There's like some really high stakes moments where like people are at real risk of dying or even like some people suffer like severe bodily harm. So there are some really scary bits in this book. And probably if I had read it when I was younger, I would have like really loved it. But unfortunately, reading it now, I was really bored for most of it and the main issue is that I couldn't relate to the main character at all. I think he's very much like a 12 year old boy and his friends are also 12 year old boys so whatever they get up to I didn't find it very interesting but as I said if you do enjoy middle grade horror and you want something that actually is not afraid to go dark places for children's book you might enjoy this one. The next book is Witch by Finbar Hawkins and I read this with the same purpose of listening to something meant for a younger audience while I worked and this one was very average to me. I really like the premise of the story which is about a young girl about 15 whose mother basically gets like persecuted and killed as a witch. I think this is supposed to be set in the past, around like the description says set in the 17th century, but really there is not a lot of indication within the story of what time period this is uh, set on. But anyway, the mother gets killed and uh, she's left alone to take care of her little sister. And they are actually witches. So they set off on their own to go find uh, her mother's coven so they can offer them some protection. However, our main character, whose name is Evie, she has a lot of anger about what happened and she wants to get revenge. So she decides to leave her little sister and actually go pursue her mother's killers and basically kill them all to avenge her mother. And the point is that um, 
at several points in the story she has to decide whether she should follow her vengeful needs or actually take care of her sister. So the premise sounded to me like it would be a very sweet story. However, I had several issues with it. The first one is that um, it wasn't clear who the intended audience uh, for this was. At some points it read not YA enough, so very much like childish, like as if it were written for children, but then really like scary stuff would happen and like actually there would be very heavy topics about like uh, death, violent deaths and things like that. So I was kind of unsure who this was meant for. And the other issue that I had is that the main character was so unlikable. And I think that in a story like this, it would have been much better if I was able to actually form a connection and care about Evie. But yeah, she was she was very annoying. She was like really rude to her sister and she kept thinking that she shouldn't be so mean to her little sister and that she should be nicer. But she kept being mean over and over again and it was like this cycle of, oh, why am I so mean to my little sister? But then being mean again over and over. And then um, at the end of the story, she suddenly changes her ways and is like out of nowhere appreciative of her little sister without like proper character growth. It just like happened overnight. So I didn't think the character development was very well written. Other than that, I did enjoy the writing was uh, very beautiful. And of course, I enjoyed the message of a young woman growing into her own power. Um, I always enjoyed those types of stories. So this was okay, but not amazing. The next book is a science fiction book. The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert Heinlein. And this was a read-along in Criminalist Discord channel for his birth year book tag reading list. And I won't really go into much detail about this because I'm going to have a reading vlog where I give you like my uh, full opinion on this, but I'd left it at three stars because it had some good things and some really bad things and they just kind of like averaged out. But plot-wise, this is about a colony on the moon who are basically under the jurisdiction of the Earth and they feel like they are being exploited, so they decide to start a revolution to gain independence. And we follow a group of very unique characters that team up to carry out the revolution. But yeah, full thoughts on the vlog coming soon. The next book is a romance book and that is Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings and I read this as a body read with MJ from Reading This Life and we read this throughout the whole month for the Autumn Amour um, event and for this one I will also have a reading blog and I will be doing a joint review with MJ but I will just say that this is about a young woman and a young man who are in an on and off again relationship well it's it's more off than on, really. Um, but the whole thing is quite complicated and pretty toxic, so it was very entertaining. But again, um, I landed at three stars because the good and the bad balanced each other out. The next book is The Spook's Apprentice by Joseph Delaney, which is also the first book in a series. And this is also a young adult or more like I think it's more children's book and this was recommended by Elizabeth Sagewood and this was exactly what I was looking for in terms of books intended for younger audiences and this is about a boy that comes from a very large family so his family decides that his job is going to be becoming a spook so he's going to be the spook's apprentice. Uh, the job of the spook in the town is to deal with all kind of supernatural creatures like ghosts, witches, etc, etc, so that they don't interfere with the rest of the townspeople and their activities. And this was extremely cozy. I loved how all the little horror elements were incorporated to tell the story and I actually was pretty invested both in the character and 
basically the, the whole cast of characters was really good. It moves quite fast and there's always something happening. Uh, the boy has to go to train with the spook and then they go through the haunted forest and then there's like a haunted house and then he meets witches. So I really, really enjoyed this one. I think it was a perfect mix of coziness, entertainment, creepy elements and like a sweet heartwarming story and I will definitely continue listening to this series. The next book is Cold Moon Over Babylon by Michael McDowell and I like this so much and again Michael McDowell is one of those writers that I wonder why I never read him before but at the same time I like knowing that there are still many authors out there that I've probably never read that I will in the future have the joy of discovering because imagine how sad it would be if we already read all the good authors right there's it's always exciting to <laughs> find new authors that we love and i'm sure michael mcdowell is one of them for me now and this one is a southern gothic tale about a family who lives in a quite precarious position financially but you know they're doing their best to make do and one day the 16 year old girl in the family is murdered quite brutally and her body is then found in the river however we soon find out that she may not be completely gone and she has come back to hunt her murderer and I'm not going to say much more because I will have a dedicated review for this and another Michael McDowell I read recently. So I will give a more thorough review on that video. And I almost forgot to say, but I actually found out that there is a movie adaptation for this. It's called Cold Moon. So I think in October I'm going to rent it and I'm going to watch it. The next book is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. And I'm not going to assume that everyone knows what this is about, although I'm pretty sure about like maybe 90% of the people who will be watching this video will know about this book. And of course I wanted to watch it before the movie adaptation came out, which it came out on September 30. I have already watched it, but to hear my thoughts on the movie you're going to have to watch my October vlogs. But anyways, this is about the book and these um, is set in the 80s and it's basically about the friendship between these two girls, Abby and Gretchen. And we go on a journey just seeing how they become friends and how their friendship gets stronger and stronger throughout the years. Until one day when they're teenagers, Gretchen starts acting in a very strange way. And she looks really bad. And not only that, but she is starting to alienate everyone in her life and Abby is convinced that this can't be her friend, that something must be wrong with her and after a lot of effort trying to figure out what's going on, she comes to the conclusion that she must be possessed by a demon and she is determined to help her friend no matter how dangerous or scary it is. And I absolutely loved this book. Um, I am actually amazed that a male writer could get female friendship especially between teenagers so well and even though this is set in the 80s and I was not a teenager in the 80s I could 100% relate to what it's like to be best friends with someone as a teen and basically sharing everything in your life with them and the possession in this story was also really well written it was like actually scary I loved how things progress and get worse and worse and worse and then until we reach like peak possession. And of course, I think perhaps the most memorable scene in this book is the actual exorcism scene. It is, I think, iconic. If anything, perhaps the first half of the book is a bit slow because it's just like a lot of backstory about Abby and Gretchen's friendship, but I think it's absolutely necessary to really elevate the possession part of the story. And the only reason it's not a five star for me, it's because of the ending. <laughs> you know, I think the last, I don't know, maybe 50 pages or something were kind of like unnecessary, but I think maybe it's, it's 
such a minor detail and I think with this one it's really oscillating between a four and a five star read and maybe when I reread it in the not so distant future this will be pumped up to a five star. And the final book and my five star read of this month was The Amulet by Michael McDowell and as I mentioned I will have a more thorough review of this one along with Cold Moon Over Babylon but this book was just so incredibly fun. It is essentially about this woman called Sarah whose husband has gone through like a really serious accident uh, while training to be in the army so he is now bedridden and she has to take care of him but she's living with her mother-in-law which treats her really really badly and also the mother-in-law blames several people in the town for her son's accident and one day um, they receive a visitor and turns out that this visitor is one of the people she thinks it's most responsible for the accident that happened and she gifts them a necklace and basically after receiving the necklace things start to go very wrong for them and then this necklace starts to get uh, passed between people and we follow the necklace and it basically just wreaks havoc in the town and this book is so packed with like action but really really gruesome action and it just keeps going and going and it's very very entertaining and at the same time we are following Sarah who's trying to figure out what's going on with this necklace and in general I think this book just has such a simple premise such a straightforward story but it is done extremely well and I enjoyed it so so much and I cannot wait to read more Michael McDowell. I think I'm going to read The Elementals now, although Katrina Brown loves Katie and that also sounds really good, so I'm not sure which one I'm going to read next. Anyways, that is the end of the list. If you have read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them. And also let me know what was your favorite book that you read in September. And I will see you on my next video, but until then, goodbye.